Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Nerdbone. It is a brand new live episode, and you know what? Just just for just for shoots and googles, just for poops and goggles, poops and goggles, shits and giggles. Uh, let's roll a d twenty. Just to let's just see. Let's just see what happens here. Twelve. I'll take a twelve. I'll take anything better than a ten, really. And in a lot of the games lately, it's been a DC thirteen for uh, for checks. But you know what? I'll take it. I'll take it. It's better. It's better than a one. It's not a botch. It's not a botch, right? Uh, so we got a couple of things to talk about. But first of all, I want to let you guys know uh, that I have joined the Beard Struggle. That's right. If you know me. You know that every once in a while, about once a year, I grow out my beard to whatever length I can possibly get it to. I want it to be as long and as full as humanly possible. And I found this really cool brand uh, called The Beard Struggle. They're at thebeardstruggle.com. Uh, and they have some really cool products. I'm getting some in the mail this week uh, that I'm really looking forward to showing to you. And... I have a promo code. That's right. If you go to thebeardstruggle.com, pick out a couple of things, check out the scents that you might like, uh, the products that you might like. For instance, I'm not, you know, I, I am getting like a, I'm getting an oil, right? I'm getting an oil, but also they sell brushes and I have never had a beard brush before. And I really feel like I'm, I'm taking my bearding level up, right? I'm leveling up my beard. Beardstruggle.com. The promo code is NerdBone20, and you will get 10% off your order. I think you're really gonna like it. I know I already like it. I think you're gonna like it. I think it's gonna be a good thing. I think I think you and me are gonna have fun with this. So moving on. Uh, I wanted to call this episode Run the Poke Jewels, uh, because those it it, it it it's the two main things that have been a constant over the past, I'd say, week and a half, among other things. There's a lot of other things. Uh, there's other things going on uh, that we will talk about eventually. I have talked about them a little bit in other posts. Um, also, by the way, my internet is lagging just a little bit. We got a storm, so I apologize for that. Uh, but anywho, let's start with Run the Jewels. <sighs> If you are a hip hop fan, you should already know who they are. Uh, Killer Mike LP. Killer Mike, you might be seeing a lot more on uh, your local news stations. Not maybe not necessarily no local news, but national news stations every once in a while, uh, talking about really important issues. He is one of the smartest dudes, one of the most intelligent dudes. Uh, I've ever seen and ever ever heard speak, and uh, I enjoy him very much from the uh, the social action stuff that he uh, that he has out there, uh, as well as his music. Now, my relationship with Run the Jewels is this: I uh, I did not I don't know how to put this. I did grow up with hip hop, but in a weird way. So when I was growing up as a little kid, as like a little kid, uh, it was a lot of Beatles and Rolling Stones. And then for my brothers who grew up in the late eighties, early nineties, right? You got Nirvana, you got Pearl Jam, you got Green Day, that sort of thing, uh, which is all cool, right? And then in the late nineties, my brother... Ash, uh, put on the radio one day and it was Eminem. Yes, I know. I am a, uh, average white dude whose introduction to rap music was Eminem, which is weird. And I, and I have some things to deal with because of that. Anywho, uh, I was, I, I was not confused by it, but I was like, oh, this is different. I, I swear I've I've heard things like this in movies and such. I was a big movie kid. I was a big TV kid. Uh, I loved watching uh, TV shows, movies, that sort of thing. And uh, I just I gravitated towards it a little bit. 
Uh, and then into the early 2000s, uh, you know, you had your hits, right? You know, so early 2000s, let's see, we had 50 Cent. Uh, Wu-Tang Clan was sort of floating around, but I wasn't really familiar with them yet. Uh, Eminem was really popping off. Paul Wall is one that I remember very distinctly. Okay, so it was a gradual, ever since I was eight years old, for like eight to 13, that range, it was a gradual interest into hip-hop. Uh, and then one day, Ash, same brother, gives me uh, Danger Mouse's The Grey Album, which, uh, if you don't know, DJ Danger Mouse, uh, he... It, it, it's hard to explain Danger Mouse. So, just go hit Wikipedia. Uh, in any case, as a young man, uh, coming up in the DJ business, I suppose... Uh, he wasn't yet a household name, that sort of thing. Uh, he mixed all of the uh, uh, the lyrics, right? All of the rapped lyrics from Jay-Z's The Black Album. And he mixed them with uh, different edits that he had made, uh, hip-hop style edits of the Beatles' White Album songs. So it was remixes of the Beatles' White Album songs with Jay-Z's lyrics from the Black Album on top of them. And it was one of the most magical experiences I think I have ever had. And probably the first... Uh, you know, I gravitated towards a lot of music, and, and I, I had an emotional investment in music before. But this one was different. This was this was very much a, oh, now this is something I can get behind. This is something I'm interested in, right? Um, struck a chord, if you will. Yeah, music reference. Uh, and uh, from there, it just it just piled up. I started listening to older stuff, uh, so Run DMC, Public Enemy, old Wu Tang Clan, that sort of thing. Uh, and then, yeah, just over the years, getting more and more familiar. So last year, last year, last year, I was talking to my brother and I had sort of been, I, I, I sort of exited out of, uh, listening to new rap and new hip hop because, you know, I, I don't like Little Yachty, and I, I don't like uh, Tika Asshole 6 9 or whatever his name is. I don't like those people. Uh, not because I think they're bad people, except for that one guy. Uh, it's ju I'm just not interested in their music. You know, it, it's, it doesn't resonate with me, right? So I sort of, I sort of took a step back. I was listening uh, to more old school stuff. Uh, you know, I downloaded, um, you know, most def, uh, most def and Talib Kweli, uh, black star, black star, downloaded black star. I was listening to that a lot. And, um, and I, and I, I sort of fell off right of, uh, modern hip hop and modern rap. And then one day I'm talking to again, brother Ash. And, uh, he was like, yo man, I'm listening to, to run the jewels. I'm like, run the jewels. That. God, that, that sounds so familiar, right? So I pull it up on iTunes, and uh, there's three albums already. I'm like, oh, well, I've, I've got some catching up to do, right? So, so I downloaded all three albums. I listened to all three uh, over the course of probably a week and a half. So good. Uh, it, it's one of those moments where I'm like, oh, oh, there, there's, still, there's still good stuff. That's that's out there. Like I don't have to go on a deep dive on SoundCloud to find good rap. I can just go. I, there's these guys, right? And I learn all about Killer Mike, and I learn all about LP. And uh, I I watched this video. Uh, I just I had just happened to stumble on this video on uh, on YouTube of um, I had some series that some company does, and, and it was LP, uh, and it's this. It's not even a competition thing. It's just something cool that they do where they, they take a DJ 
and they blindfold the DJ and just stick him in a uh, in a record shop, right? And uh, and they just you just randomly pick out three albums, vinyl, and then you take him back somewhere and you uh, you mix them. You, you you find something that works uh, off of tracks off of all three albums uh, and you mix it together. And he did it. I can't even remember. I think one of the song or one of the, uh, one of the albums, there was two that like, didn't make any sense. One of them was like, like a Mozart, like an album of Mozart, which I think he ended up using like, uh, like a gong tone or something like that, or the, or just like a bell ring or something. And then, uh, but one of the albums was Gladys Knight and the Pips and, uh, talk, talk about getting a beat off of something, my God. Uh, perfect. Right. So, uh, so I watched that. I'm like, oh, uh, uh, LP. Uh, oh, God. And then I'm hearing all this stuff from Killer Mike and I'm following him on, you know, social media and seeing all this amazing stuff. I'm like, oh, my God, you're amazing. Right. So finally, a few months ago, we get, we start getting little, little bits and pieces of RTJ4, Run the Jewels 4. And uh, I have just been. <sighs> on the edge of my seat and I've been, I keep re-listening to run the jewels three or I kept listening to run the jewels three up, up until uh, the release uh, a couple of days ago of uh, run the jewels four. And it's just been, <sighs> it's just been drilled into my brain. I, I absolutely love it. If you are a hip hop fan or a rap fan, I absolutely recommend it. Uh, I still have to, Hey Vic, how's it going, buddy? Uh, I still have to, um, I still have to digest a lot of the lyrics. I still have to. I I haven't done. I, I I'm young, right? But I but I'm sort of an old school guy. Where uh, when a new album comes out, I listen to the album, you know, a couple of times through. I get into the groove of things, right? but I don't necessarily hear all of the lyrics. I don't necessarily understand. Uh, and what it takes is just sitting down with the lyrics in front of you and listening to every song and reading the lyrics along with the song so that you can understand. Right. And I haven't done that yet. So at some point there's going to be another episode of this where we're just going to talk about RTJ four. Right. Um, but I'll tell you, there's some, there's there's some real shit in that, some real stuff. Ah, too cool. All right, before we get on to our next uh, subject, which is going to be pop 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 Pokemon cards, uh, I wanted to let you guys in on a little thing called NerdBonePod.com. Now look, here's what happened. I knew that I was going to need a website when I started Nerdbone. Uh, and I tried. I tried very honestly. And it didn't work out that great. It was not great. However, this past week, I sat down with my good buddy, Super Joe Pardo. And Joe... Uh, on this great series that he does, or well, just started doing anyway. Uh, basically, like I walked him through what I had or what I thought I had anyway, which was I thought I had disabled this website because I was having such a hard time with it, and and apparently I didn't because he pulled it right up, uh, and it looked awful. Uh, but we talked about it. We talked a lot about you know, the psychological part of being a business owner on the internet where podcasting is your business, which is a very interesting thing. I think it's a very interesting thing. So I spent a couple extra hours on Sunday night uh, and earlier this afternoon after uh, my, my in-between work schedule, which I'll get to later. Uh, and I totally revamped nerdbonepod.com in fact special announcement thingy mabob majiga thing is that we are no longer 
Lazy Banana Podcast Network. I loved being a part of Lazy Banana. Now, here's the thing. Lazy Banana is still going to exist uh, as a producer of art things. Uh, For those of you who don't know and only just listen to this show or listen to some of our other podcasts, that sort of thing. Um, Let's see. Victor Aragon in the comments. Walking in the snow. So good. Yes. I I have to do a deep deep dive on that. RTJ4 walking in the snow. Um, So for those of you who don't know, Lazy Banana is my production company. And by production company, I mean... I had the idea for this thing back in 2007. I was 17 years old. I was in uh, junior year of high school. And I knew somehow that there was no one medium of expression that was going to satisfy my creative needs. I knew that what it was going to have to be is, is one production company that covers all of the things that I love. Right. So I started lazy banana and I have done many things over the years, uh, since then, uh, with that title, with that brand, uh, as the founder and CEO of uh, lazy banana. And then when I started doing podcasts, of course, lazy banana podcast studios, etc. Uh, but at this point, I feel more comfortable with Lazy Banana being its own separate entity, its own separate thing, uh, which is going to cover more of the short film stuff and uh, a lot of the writing I do and that sort of thing. And Nerdbone, as a brand, will be uh, a much more suitable attitude and a much more suitable... Uh, structure that I already have set up as a podcast uh, network. Uh, Right now, I've got three shows going to be four soon uh, with a number of um, short run podcasts, uh, you know, short series podcasts that I'm working on for the future. And uh, it's just, it's so interesting with uh, with talking to Joe the other day and taking a look at the website again, and I've been thinking about this brand stuff for a little while, it's just sort of everything meshing together in this really weird yet awesome way. So Nerdbone Industries, uh, Nerdbone Podcast Network is now a thing. Uh, Lazy Banana still exists, but right now with all the podcasts, it is all under the Nerdbone brand. So please, please, I beg of you, <laughs> go check out uh, nerdbonepod.com where you will find brand new episodes of Cosmic Kung Fu, the new philosophy podcast I have with my brother. I have Dungeons and Dragons breakdowns. I have uh, podcast episodes for all of the shows, including uh, video versions that you can find on YouTube channel as well uh if you go to podcasts you can find it at least uh nerdbone and the blank show there uh with more to be added soon yes i love a productive week i really do i love a productive week all right so let's talk about (sighs) pokemon now big fan when i was a kid Collected the cards. Oh, God, I collected the cards. Collected the cards. I played the game every once in a while. I wasn't a big game player, uh, but I did enjoy it from time to time. I didn't really get to understand all the rules, but that's neither here nor there. I had a good time. I still have my original collection, uh, save for a couple of cards that I really should have held on to because they're really freaking expensive now. Uh, But in any case, So throughout this whole quarantine, uh, the kiddo and I, you know, my wife's been working a lot. So it's been a lot of hours of, uh, the kiddo and I just spending time together, which has been amazing. Uh, and a lot of, uh, you know, we've had her schoolwork to do going for walks outside, that sort of thing. We have a great neighborhood for just going for walks, going for a bike ride, that sort of thing. 
and uh but we've been playing a lot of board games board games has become uh has become a big thing and for many reasons i decided i felt like (laughs) getting back into pokemon i thought it was a good time for her she's six years old uh i felt like it's a good thing for me uh because it's less expensive than comic books (laughs) And I can't get to the comic book store right now. Um, I think they're doing, uh, I think they're doing pickup, but you know, I just want to be safe. It's a small, it's a small comic book store uh, compared to, you know, the kiddo and I can make a target run and stay pretty safely away from everybody and uh, pick up a couple of booster packs, that sort of thing. Uh, And also just a general re sparking of my interest. So I have to date in the past two weeks, something like that, two weeks, I have spent around $150 on Pokemon cards. Now, look, I know what you're going to say. That's insane. Uh, How is this a cheaper option than comic books? How is this acceptable, et cetera, et cetera. Well, the easiest way to explain it is uh, what I did was I went out and got two elite trainer boxes. Now, an elite trainer box is super handy because it gives you everything you need to build a deck and it has the sleeves it and everything. It's got all the accoutrements. Uh, And I got two of those, one for me, one for her, a couple of booster packs and boom, we can just, we can just stick with that. Like, never have to get another booster pack or another trainer box ever again. We can just stick with those cards for the rest of time. Will we do that? Probably not. But if you consider, all right, so a hundred dollar investment to get started, we could stick with that forever. Booster packs are five bucks. So to be fair, to be fair, uh, I feel pretty good about it. Uh, I am not going to go out every weekend or even every other weekend and like just buy a stack of of booster packs. I'm not going to do that. Right. That's going to be an every once in a while thing. It'll be, you know, her birthday's coming up in August and it'll be stocking stuffers, uh, for Christmas, that sort of thing. Uh, so I feel like as far as games go and collectible stuff goes, it's actually not that bad of an investment. Or I'm just talking myself into it. It could be either one. Uh, but in any case, we've been having a lot of fun. Uh, I've taken the time to relearn how to play and learn some of the new rules, some of the new cards, that sort of thing. And I've been able to do it in a really neat way, uh, which is by playing. I'm trying to pull it up here in a second yes so i have been playing oh there i am right now that's trippy uh so i have been playing the um oh god it's like it's like glitching out now oh no (laughs) it's glitching out okay i'm gonna i'm gonna stop that i'm gonna stop that right now (laughs) Because that's just gonna break the internet. Okay, so uh, so I have been playing uh, Pokemon, the trading card game online. Uh, Pokemon TCG Online is a really cool interactive, uh, you know, laptop gaming online community thing uh, where you just play Pokemon. It's like it's just it's just playing Pokemon. It's just on the interwebs, uh, and that has been a really great way for me to relearn the game. Uh, relearn all the nuances and stuff like that, and basically gave me the tools to reteach or not reteach, uh, reteach myself, but also teach the kiddo how to play. And now we are playing on the regular, uh, not every day, maybe every other day. Um, and it's it's fun. I mean, she has fun. It, it gets a little bit boring when we start to do the math stuff, uh, because she's not crazy about math stuff in the first place, and. Um, we like we just finished up school. <laughs> Her last day of school was uh last week, so you know she was like, ah, oh, dad, we got to do math again. Come on, I thought we were over this stuff. Well, 
I think it's going to help. I think it's going to help her, uh, you know, I, th- I, th- I think it's going to help in that regard. It's fun, slightly educational, pretty colors. I think it's great. Uh, and of course, we're having a ton of fun when we open new booster packs and when we originally opened our elite trainer boxes. Oh God, that was a lot of fun. It was so neat just going through each of the stacks and like, oh, what's this card? What's this card? What's this card? Oh, we got a hologram. That's amazing. You know, and, and it just brought back that feeling that I had as a kid. Uh, so yeah, last thing, uh, twitch.tv slash nerdbone, uh, nerdbone pod, nerdbone. Let me check out that. Uh, twitch.tv slash nerdbone pod. Uh, every once in a while, I will be streaming, uh, like I am right now, streaming on Twitch. This is the podcast version of Twitch, uh, of my Twitch channel, but I will be streaming, uh, me playing pokemon tcg online uh i've already got one video up there from the other day uh and it was fun it was it was uh, like a like a hangout it was a hangout type thing i dig it i dig it it was fun uh and one more time before i sign off <sighs> excuse me oh there's iced coffee holy moly okay uh one more time before i sign off just a reminder uh, that I have joined the beard struggle, uh, beardstruggle.com for all your beardy goodness. I'm growing it out again. I want to get it as long and as healthy and as full as humanly possible. Uh, I've ordered a brush. I've ordered some balm to keep it healthy. Uh, and I think just by looking at the site, looking through all the products. I think there's going to be stuff that you would enjoy too. If you are a beardly fellow, uh, or if you are a lady and you would like to get gifts for friends or your partner or what have you, maybe your dad looks like Santa Claus, like mine does. I know I'm going to be getting my dad some stuff. Head on over to the beardstruggle.com and use the promo code nerdbone 20 at checkout for 10% off of your order. All right, guys, I'm going to bed. It is late. It is 1144. I started this thing right when I got home from work. I'm a crazy man. I hope you guys have a great rest of your week. I hope you have a great weekend after that, and I will see you next time. Peace.